She received her AAS degree in business administration from Edgecombe County Community College. After 30 years of service with the Edgecombe Solar and Water Conservation District, she retired on March 1st, 2016. Her retirement did not end her tenure. She was later appointed to the Board of Soil it comes soil and water conservation district and currently serves as the chairperson. Margaret preached her initial sermon on May 18, 2008, entitled "Certainly I Will Be I Will Be with Thee" at the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Walter Cherry. She has attended Higher Learning Bible Institute of Wilson Chapel Creekville Baptist Church where she earned an AAS degree in technology and theology. I'm sorry. She later attended the Long Branch Bible Institute where she earned associate bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree in the biblical studies. She was ordained in November 27, 2011 after attending a series of ordination, ordination classes and <laughs> that word. <laughs> At the North End Missionary Baptist Church under the direction of the late Dr. Elwood Lee Jr. She and her husband James are members of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church under the pastor of Reverend Michael E. Lewis, which she serves as an associate minister. As associate minister. Dr. Knight serves in many other capacities in her church, but her greatest passion in Bible study is Bible study and sharing the gospel with others. The evangelist Knight asserts that her hope is built on nothing else than Jesus' love and his righteousness. She dares not trust the sweetest frame, but woe leans on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, she stands. For she knows all of all the ground is sick and sand. After the next election, you will hear our speaker, Evangelist Dr. Margaret S. Knight.
give honor to the angel of this house. Yes. 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 To the of the wife. Yes. To all the ministers that labor with me. Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory yes. to God. To the wonderful presider. Yes. Yes. To my sister, Reverend Shirley Heath. Yes. All those who travel with me are uh, from Anderson Chapel. Anderson Chapel, will you please stand? Our wonderful husband and best friend, Lisa James Knight. We bring you greetings from the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Amen. where the Reverend Malcolm Emmanuel Lewis is our pastor. Amen. 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 And Amen. you know, we just love, love serving the Lord over yes, Anderson Lord. Chapel. Amen. We just have a good time praising and worshiping God. Because that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Giving God the glory for Amen. the great things that yes. He has done. Yes. Because none of us, right. none of us, would be where we are today right. if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side. Some of us, all of us, would be lost and in a mess. Yes. But praise God. Yes. Praise God. He looked beyond our faults and He saw our people. Yes, He did. Thank God for it. Thank God for Jesus. Will you pray with me? Most holy, all wise, and everlasting Father. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the opportunities that you have given us to serve and worship you. We thank you, God, for the gift of your son, Jesus the Christ. And we thank you, God, that he gave his life, that he gave it willingly, that we who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, Lord, I ask that you hide me behind the cross, that they may see less of me and more of thee. I must decrease that you might increase, God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 for the week. For such a time as this, we didn't come here to play. It's yeah. time out for playing. Yeah. It's time out for playing. How many of you know it's time out for playing? Uh, yeah. It's time out to start playing church, yeah. pretending to be something you are not. Yeah. Yeah. Doing things you know you shouldn't yeah. do, thinking yeah. you can hide from God. Yeah. It's time out for playing. Yeah. It's time yeah. that we are about our Father's business. Yeah. Because time is winding up and night is surely coming yeah. when no man can work. So I want to encourage you to work while it is dead. Because night is surely coming. It's on the way. It's on the way. And I don't mean 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening. I'm talking about that time when God's going to snatch his church out of his world. And once he takes his church out of this world, he is free to release the wrath that he has been holding back because of his church. So it's time to stop playing. It is time to stop playing. But how many of you know that that is up to you? It's up to you. Only you can make that decision. It is up to you. If you would go with me to the book of Esther, and I'm sure it's been made, read many times this week, um, I'm going to come from Esther chapter 4, verses, I'm going to begin at verse 14. Now let's go to verse 13 and read down to verse 17 from the book of Esther chapter 4. If you don't mind, please stand in reference to God's word. And I will be reading from the King James Version. 
beginning with verse 13. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather all the Jews there are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. You may be seated. For such a time as this, we did not come here to play. Subtopic. It's up to you. It is up to you. Now I know we go through many things on life's journey. Minister uh, Dickens has already talked about some of the battles that we're going to face, some of the challenges that we're going to go through. Mm -hmm. God didn't say it was going to be easy. That's right. That's right. He didn't say it was going to be a bed of roses. No. He told you up front that the world was going to hate you yeah, yeah. because it hated him. Yeah. Right. And you are no better than Christ. Yeah. So you're going to go through some things on this journey. But these things are to prepare you, to shape you, to mold you, to make you into the person that God desires you to be. Now, I know a lot of us lend our, our troubles and blame our troubles and our trials and our on the devil. But I don't give him no credit. I don't give him no credit. Whatever I'm going through is because of God. It's because God has allowed it to happen. God has desired it to happen that he might strengthen me, that he might build me up, that he might teach me, that he might shape and mold me, that if I'm out of order, I will get in order. If I'm on the wrong path, I will get on the right path, but that I will be what he desires me to be. So it is up to me how I respond to what I am going through in my life. It is up to me whether I choose to believe on the Lord or doubt. It is up to me whether I choose to give up or stand back on the promises of the Lord. Either you 
are for or you are against. Either for God you live or your soul shall die. And I'm telling you right now, for God I live and for God I die. Because I don't know what I might face in this life. I don't know what's coming. But I stand on what God has done in my life. And I know that he's never left me. Not just by what he said, by what he has proved in my life, what he has done in my life. He has never left me, nor has he forsaken me. So I'm standing on the promises of God. I know who I am. I know who I know who I am. And I know in whom I believe. So I don't get caught up in a whole lot of stuff. I used to. I used to. I used to cry about things. I used to worry about things. I used to fret about things, but that's not me anymore. Because I am about my father's business, and he has told me that he came that I might have life, yeah. and therefore abundantly, he didn't tell me people were going to give it to me, he didn't tell me that things were going to give it to me, he said he, he grants it to me. So for such a time as this, I didn't come to play. And I hope you're not playing either. Because the choice it's up to you. Amen. Whether you make it in or not, it's up to you. Jesus said, none come unto me except my father draw them. But guess what? God can be called. He can be called. But you can refuse to answer. It's your choice. It's your choice. See, God is moving in our lives. Sometimes we don't even realize it. We don't even realize that even in the midst of what we're going through, in the midst of, 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 of see like everything falling down around us. See, like, yeah, I think the songwriter said, I got up on top of the world and now the world's on top of me. Yeah. But even in the midst of that, God is working. That's right. He is working. In the book of Esther, you don't see God's name not one time. It's not mentioned one time. You don't hear prayer. You do hear the word fasting, which is one of our weapons of warfare. We do hear that word. But these Jews in Shushan were already out of the will of God. Now, how were they out of the will of God? Because they were still in Persia. They were still there because God told them after the 70 years to do what? Go home. Go back to Israel. But they didn't do that. They stayed in Persia. Why? Because life was good then. Because he told them while they were in captivity, plant fields, give your wives to sons, take sons for your, for your daughters to marry, to plant your vineyards, to grow and have a good time there, to enjoy life there. Because this was your 70 years of punishment. You would be here, but he hadn't left them. He was just chastising them for not being obedient. So some of them began to enjoy where they were. How many of you know when you were in the world, you were enjoying it? Yes, so. You were having a good time. Yes, so. You were hanging out at a club. You were having fun. You were having fun, but you were doing all those things you knew you were for. You were having fun. You were enjoying yourself. Let's not lie about it. Try to see it out to We enjoyed a sinful life. It felt good. How I many you know everything is good to you? Is it good for you? So sometimes, because things are working out for us, don't mean they're for our good. But we know that God takes all things, all things that allows them to work together for our good, to them that are called according to His purpose. So, you know, we're in, sometimes we're out of will of God. We're out of God's will. But in order to serve him, in order to hear from him, in order to have him respond to you, you have to get back in his will. Amen. But God is provident in our lives. He's provident in the life of man. Providence means God will provide. God provides. But it also means that every aspect of your life, God has got a hand in it. He's either watching it, Moving in it, 
allowing things to happen, but God is still in control. Yes. We know in the in the book of Job that Satan was walking to and fro, seeking, seeking whom he could, you know, devour. But guess what? God said, "Have you tried my servant Job?" You know that's good when God can offer you up, knowing what your response is going to be. How are you going to be offered up by God, knowing that God believes in you like you believe in Him? Not what Satan can do in your life, but what God allows Satan to do in your life. Stop giving the devil so much credit. He can only do what God allows him to do. He is not omnipotent. He is not omnipresent. He is not omniscient. He does not have the powers of God. He is limited in what he can do to you. He can oppress you, but he cannot possess you. Because you belong to God. So don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in what the devil can do to you. Think about what God is allowing to happen and why. So in, 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 in Persia, in, in Shushan, Haman, this old guy, you know how it is sometimes folks see you doing well? See people liking you, see people supporting you and encouraging you. And what happens? That old green-eyed monster creeps in. <laughs> that old green-eyed monster. We know who that monster is. That monster is jealous. I don't want the Lord to do nothing in your life. I don't want him to lift you up. I don't want to stand by you. I don't want to do this because I want to prosper. And if you prosper, then how can I be prosper? They don't realize that God is prosper all of us. <laughs> jealous of Mordecai. So he went to the king and asked for a decree to kill all the Jews. Well, the king, not really paying attention and being so smart, you know, he get mad in a, in a heartbeat and, 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 and sent his wife away and didn't realize he wanted another one. That's how Esther became the queen because of the queen mood, the king's mood swing. So the king signs the decree and once he signed the decree in Persia, you cannot make it that. So even when the king had a change of heart, because he realized that the decree he had signed meant the death of his queen, he wanted to change his mind. But he couldn't do that because of the laws of Persia. So he had to go through this. But guess what? Mordecai knew that there was a reason that God has allowed Esther to be the king's wife. Don't you know when God puts you in a position, oh, it's for his service, it's not about you. It's because he needs you there that he can use you at the appointed time and you have to have yourself ready, willing, and prepared to do what God has called you to do. Every one of us was born with a purpose placed on our life. And when God calls you up and says it's time for you to step up, it's time for you to take action. You need to be ready. You need to be confident. You need to be bold. And you need to go forth knowing that he that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. You need to go forth knowing that no matter what happens, you will be all right. No matter what happens, God will take care of you. Now some some scholars say that the Jews didn't even know God. They didn't retain God in their thoughts. But I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Because Mordecai told Esther, you may not stand, but there will surely a deliverance come for the Jews from another source. He knew that was God. He knew that was God. I don't have to beat you down with a Bible to let you know what I'm saying. The life I live speaks for me. My life is a living epistle. I may be the only Bible that the world may see. So I don't have to talk God, God, God everywhere I go. But I have to live it so that you can see something in me. Let me tell you 
was watching out for you.
prepared. Be willing. Be ready. See, God called Esther. But there were four things that Esther had to do. She had to be willing to listen up. She had to be willing to listen up. She had to be willing to stand out. Then she had to be willing to look up and then speak up. Are you prepared to do that today? To listen up. She listened to Mordecai when he gave her advice. She heard what he had to say when he challenged her because the first thing she said was, the king ain't called me in a month. And if I go to him, I could die. He told her, don't think you safe in there in that castle. She listened to what he had to say. So a lot of times we talk too much and we listen too little. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Oh, so yeah. that we would hear quite as much as we speak. Sometimes we speak too fast. I've been accused of that and I've been guilty of that. I will own up to it. Sometimes I talk too much and I talk too fast. Before I understand the whole situation, I've already prepared my thoughts. Right. And sometimes it's out of order. But I've learned to listen, to hear what God has to say, to hear God's instruction. Because without God leading us, we are lost. Amen. Without God guiding us, we're going to make some mistakes. When we get ahead of God, we get out of order. And outside the will of God is not a safe place to be. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. So I've learned to listen. I've learned to hear what God has to say. Then I've learned to stand out. And I'm not talking about my dress, my appearance. I'm talking about my character, my attitude. I know how to respond now. I know how to act now. I know how to treat people now. I know now how to represent Christ as his ambassador. I know that I can stand in my left and represent God. I know that I can do like I want to and represent God. I have changed my attitude. And how to present myself so that people will hear what I have to say. Because if I come up to you with a jacked up attitude, guess what you're going to do to me? You're going to either come back at me with a jacked up attitude or you're going to turn and walk away. And if your soul be lost and that blood is required of my hand because of the way I presented myself to you. And the next thing I learned to do was look up. Look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I've learned to look up knowing that no matter what I go through in life, I am not standing by myself. I may not see anybody, but I feel the presence of the Savior right there with me. I've been through some tough times. I've been through some hard times, but I was never alone. I never once felt alone. I never felt defeated. I never felt I was going to lose the battle. Because I know what Jesus had promised me. He said, by his stripes, I am healed. When they gave me my diagnosis, when they told me my condition, I didn't have no doubt. I went into the journey knowing that it might be a little tough, the road might be a little bumpy and rocky, but I knew that I was coming.
If you dig a ditch for me, you better be prepared. Because you gonna be the one to lie in. And that's what Haman did. The gallows he built for Mordecai was the gallows that he and his family hung on. So don't worry about people who lay traps for you. Don't worry about that. You do what God has called you to do. You do what God has ordained you to do. You stand on his promises, believing and trusting that he will deliver you out of it all. Yes. Don't worry about the world. Yes. God's going to take care of the world. Yes. Don't worry about me. Because if he's not in Christ, God's going to take care of him too. Yes. Don't worry about those that can destroy the body. Yes. Worry about him that can destroy the soul. Yes. I've learned. I've learned. That I can stand for those who can't stand for themselves. I can speak for those who can't speak for themselves. And I've also learned something else. It's my responsibility to do so. It's not, my, it's not right for me to accept the blessings of God. To accept the gifts of God. And go into my comfort zone. And stay there uncaring, unwavering. I'm thinking about anybody but myself. Because God has blessed me with many things. I got healthy children. I got healthy grandchildren. I got a loving husband. I got a loving family. I got the support system that I need. I got a church family. Amen. But that's not just for me. One thing Reverend Cherry taught me from the day I met him. God always gives you enough to share with somebody else. You never have just enough. There's always more than you think there is. It's just like the widow that was going to make the little cake. And she and her son were going to eat it. Oh, my life. But when you stand before Jesus, 
sin. And he says, depart from me, for I know you're not. That's going to be a crying time, but it's going to be too late. If you don't know him, if you've been faking it, if you've been pretending, then get over yourself. Come on. Don't worry about the crowd, Come on. but seek him right now while he may be found. Yes. While the blood is running warm in your veins, see Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because when he comes back for his church, it says in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you won't have time to get ready. You better be ready. So do it now. Do it now. Do it now. For such a time as this, we are living in the end times. We just will face it. We are the generation that has seen all the signs. We are the generation that has heard and seen. And what are we going to do with what we've heard and seen? Are we going to be the servants of Christ as we promised? Or are we going to continue to sit in our comfort zone, protecting ourselves? Yes, that's, right. that's not why you were called. That's not why you were called. Peter refused to be crucified, crucified right side up. But he was crucified for the Lord. Paul chastised the church with everything he had. But he also served it with vigor and strength. He was beheaded for the cause of the gospel. That's right. Are you willing? Are you willing today for such a time as this to go to the king say, if I perish, I perish. Are you willing to be the one to stand up? Are you willing to do what God has purposed in your life to do? Are you willing it's up to you. It's up to you. This is a volunteer army. God does not force anybody to do anything. But he says, they that suffer with me shall reign with me. He has told you what the gifts are, what the reward is. He's also told you what the cost is if you refuse to stand with him. So it's up to you. Based on the information that you have, you make a decision. Is it for God or is it for the world? Who do you choose on today? Joshua said, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Is that your choice on today? It is up to you. To God be the Lord.